Hey folks, JD here, and today we've got this. This is the SEMA X25W. Now, there's been quite a lot of differences, quite a lot of changes to this type of drone that SEMA has uh, has brought out. Let's open it up and have a little look. So, a lot. Oh, there we are. That's what we're getting inside. Right, let's open this up. So we've got an upside down drone that we have to assemble. There is a load of accessories and stuff. So I will talk about all those in a bit. Let's get everything out of the way. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. Oh, oh wow. Overuse of sellotape there. Okay, so we'll talk about all that in a bit. Let's look at this. Wow, that's got that's quite some weight. Okay, here is the SEMA. Standard SEMA look. Little bit changed though. Looks a lot like the SEMA X5 UW. Uh, rounded edges. These sort of um, these motor housings on the outside here are a round ball affair now. Um, the LEDs are inside the uh, the motor housings on the on on the ends here. That's quite nice. You've got the on and off button just at the top here. You've got the SEMA logo on a nice little bit of uh, plastic there as well. Very nice. Very clean. This red metallic plastic looks quite nice. It is really quite thick. It is really quite sturdy. Okay, if you push the, the middle down, it does bend, but the outside doesn't, which is quite nice. Now at the bottom, we have a little hole here. This is where we connect our camera. Now this camera is a little bit different to what we've seen on the other SEMA X range. Now, this particular camera is a 720p lens. Uh, which is pretty good, not bad. Let's see if it is actually true 720p at uh, 25 frames a second. That I don't know yet. Little Wi-Fi antenna off the back here. This is obviously your port here, which this is obviously your cable here, which you plug into your ports there. Then we have the lens at the front. Now this lens is movable, so it'll move up and down, but you do it via the transmitter. I'll come on to that in a bit. So you can actually get the angle that you want, which is very, very good. Now... Where am I here? Let's have a little look. Let's plug this in. So, yeah, that goes in one way. Excuse the hands, folks, for this. But that is quite literally plugs in. Should be as easy as that. Yeah, it is. There we are. And then the cable just goes, rolls around on the inside like usual. And then once you twist this camera until you can feel it bite, and then once you feel it bite, then you just twist it the other way to lock it in. Which is easier said than done. So I don't want to over twist these cables. There we are, that's in. Oh, really? That doesn't feel right, that doesn't look right either. But the only way that this seems to go in is that way. Okay, that's a bit strange. Let me try this the other way because... There we go, that's better. Right, that's better. So there you are, we have the camera on the underside here. It does fit in both ways. So it'll go in, I'm taking the back here, the battery bay, to be the back of the quad, like normal. In which case, you can have the camera face in this way, so you can fly backwards. Uh, so you can, sorry, you can fly forward, but record backwards. But I would rather have it on the front, so I can see where I'm actually flying. So that is something that you can have as well. But you can, you can, you can click it on both ways. And likewise, to take it off, just click it off and pull it obviously and then undo the the cable connections on the inside there now we do have a couple of holes on the propeller arms here these holes are for the landing sprigs now i'm guessing the landing sprigs yeah they're in with the spare in with the propellers in with the usb charger as well so if i get everything out here so let's as we had already started on the landing sprigs let's concentrate on that so these landing sprigs it's a dowel affair, so these just click in like that. And let's do the next one. There we go, that's in. And then we do the next one again. And they just fit in like that. Really quite easy, really quite nice. No fuss at all. And then you've got the quad copter that looks like that. Which is alright, isn't it? That's not too bad. That looks okay. I quite like that. These are sturdy. These are very sturdy. Okay, they've got a bit of a wobble on. Uh, but that's not that much. Obviously, I was putting a lot of pressure behind that. If you were just to do it normally, there's not a lot there at all. That feels quite sturdy. 
I'm liking the feel of this. This is feeling like a really sturdy quadcopter. It really is. Then we've also got our propellers. So we've got uh, two sets by the look of it. You need two A's and you need two B's as well. So it's the two A's that go on one side and the two B's that go on the other side. Fortunately, you have on the one side here you have A and then on the other side there you will have B. So you know exactly which way this goes on. Now just by checking the underside of these propellers you can see there's only one way they go on and that quite literally, if you look at the motor here, if I can just get this in focus, look at the motor there, right? And then look at that, you can see there is only one way it goes on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up, this is B, so B goes on, and I'm guessing this is going to be quite a pinch for it to go on. Do I push it on and then click it on, I wonder? Yes, I do. So you've got to push it on and then twist, and it's that twist in action that then locks it into place. One. Obviously I'm going to double check this as well before I go out and fly just to ensure this is the right way and if there isn't then I will let you know. Um, now what is a bit strange is I've got four, I've got three plastic bits on here which I think is just to hold on this. It only serves the purpose just to stop the motor, these little plastic, these little plastic discs here but I haven't got one on this side which is going to be quite awkward when I come to fit that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them on. So once again, B goes on with B. Click and twist, and then that's on nice and secure. A goes on with A, so likewise. Click on, oh, that was a bit stiff. Click on, and then, tr oh, this is really fiddly. Click on, and then twist. Oh, God damn it. That really digs into your fingers. Um... Right, okay, that's A there as well. Let's do B the other side. Push down. Now this is the side that doesn't have anything on it. I'm going to have to come back to that side because that is going to be really tricky. I'm wondering whether one of those has fallen off in the box. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to double check that because if there's a thing I've got to put on. Come on, in you go. Now the thing with this is, you can see, let me just show you, on the propellers where the number is, or the letter is rather, you've got a little arrow as well showing you which direction to move it, which is really quite nice. Uh, it shows you one way to lock and it shows you the other way to unlock. Right, there's one. Some of these are higher than the others. Is that because that hasn't locked on properly? Oh my god, that's... Yes, there we are. So when they lock on, when they lock on, they look like that. They, do, they aren't flush, right? They look like this. See that little gap there? Likewise, the same for this side. So if I try and pull that off, it isn't coming off because it's locked in. So then you're going to have to push it down and then follow in what, whatever direction it says on, on the propellers, twist to unlock. That is really fiddly. And because I don't have a ring underneath there, this side is going to be quite tricky. I might have to get a pliers on this or something to... Because I need to push it down really far and then twist. I wonder if I can use the charger to push that down. No, I can't. I need something which is a little bit stronger than that charger there. And then... Oh! No. Right. Okay. So, I've got to put another one on, but I haven't got that extra cog. Let me just check in the box. There is nothing in the box. Okay, so I am missing a cog. Oh, no, I got it. I got it, I got it, I got it. It was on the floor. So, which side? That side there. So, you want to put it up this way. Can I just snap that into place, I wonder? Let me just be able to snap that into place. I wonder. Oh, I can. Ha! All right, perfect. And then B with B, and once again, holding on to the disc, click in, and then whichever way it says to lock, twist, and then pull up a little bit just to lock it in place. Right, good God, that was fiddly. Okay, so there we go. Two on, two on. So that is the quadcopter. Looks quite nice, doesn't it? I think it does. I'm gonna be giving this a try in the house as well before I take her outside, just to ensure that these are all on properly and they are all on and they're not gonna come off. So what I'm gonna do is probably start them up, start the motors up, and then I'm gonna, sorry, bind the transmitter onto the quadcopter and I'm going to leave the room, close.
close the door and then throttle up a little bit. A little bit, not enough for it to take off, but just enough for these to move, just so that we can see exactly what's going on. Right, these are fiddly, but they seem to have locked on really well, so that's not too bad. Right, so this feels like quite a heavy copter. Exactly how heavy is it? Well, we have got a camera on there. It's 233 grams is its flying weight. So its flying weight is 233, so it's still under the 250 grams, but by God, it's coming close. Really is coming close. Okay, so in the, other, in the accessory bag that we opened for the propellers, we get another four propellers in there as well. You get a USB charger. You get your balance charger as well. You only get one battery with this model. Um, more can be bought. Talking about the battery, the battery itself just clicks into the bottom of the battery bay here. The battery bay just opens out fully and there's the battery. The battery is a 7.4 volt, 1000 milliamp hour battery. It'll charge in 150 minutes and give you 12 minutes of flight apparently. So that would be quite good. I'm looking forward to seeing whether we do actually get 12 minutes of flight out of that bad boy. Right, so that is the quadcopter. I'm really intrigued to see as well exactly how well this lens moves. But we shall come on to that in the flight test. Okay, so there is the quadcopter. Some of the other features as well that I haven't mentioned and I should have is optical flow with this particular quadcopter. A first, I think, with SEMA. I may be wrong there, but I think it's certainly a first with SEMA. 360 flips, auto takeoff and landing, 720p camera, as we mentioned earlier, as well as removable antenna, uh, removable gimbal, sorry, movable gimbal, and flight plan. But flight plan only works if you have your smartphone. And also there's an SD card right at the back. Make sure you put an SD card in there before you take her out, just to be on the safe side, so you can get those aerial shots that you want to get. This is the transmitter, very standard SEMA transmitter, but there is one slight change. Look at this. Normally you get two buttons on the shoulders, but the left shoulder now looks like this. So you have gimbal move up and down, as well as take photo and record video. That's what these four buttons do. So you have your gimbal move up and down, and then you have your record video and take photo there. Everything else about this is exactly the same. You have auto landing and take off, as well as 360 flips on the right. Then you have your two uh, analog sticks as usual. You're on and off button in the middle with your with your um, indication LED in the center of the on and off button there. As for the batteries, well, this has got a little screw in the back of it here, so I'm going to have to take that out. And inside here we should be looking at four AA batteries um, to power up this bad boy. Yep, four AA batteries. This transmitter does not allow charging a USB by of any sort. So therefore you are going to have to ensure that you have got properly shot bought and fully charged batteries in here before you take her out for a flight. Obviously then you have the two antenna on the top as well, which is pretty standard for SEMA. I like this transmitter. It's a little bit plasticky, but it does exactly what it needs to do. I think I've used transmitters like this with SEMA copters, I think, seven or eight times different transmitters, and they've all been very, very good. Okay, so that is your transmitter. You, there is one thing you want to do, though, and that is just to put on the FPV boom. So just slide it in into the clicks. There we go. You're now locked in place. And then you've got your pincer grip there for your phone. Very, very nice indeed. Now... As we are looking at the transmitter, we are going to be looking at the app that you need for this. Now, unfortunately, this isn't SEMAGO. This is a totally different app. This is the app needed for this. It is called SEMA Fly. So what we're going to do, folks, we're going to break from this for a minute and have a quick little look at that OK, app. so here is the app. So when you open it up, a lot like a lot of apps these days, you get a choice of what drone it is that you want to use. So at the top here, you'll see the model. You can click down and you can click on whichever drone you want to see. You can also slide left to right as well. So honestly, if you want to... Honestly, I, I, I think I prefer the slide left to right just because, well, I quite like that. Down the bottom, you have um, the drone, you have web, you have multimedia and you have help at the bottom there. You also have your settings cog at the top here to record sound via the phone. Your language is automatically English. When you're ready, click start. Come on. And then hopefully, I don't know if it has to be connected to the quad here, but you get a couple of options. Always allow Seamify to actually you, you access your location only while using the app. I don't need to know exactly where I am when I'm not using the app. It's pointless. So here we go. This is a nice new looking, um, or I think it's a nice new looking uh, 
interface for SEMA. So at the top here you get your signal strength, you get your satellites, you get your battery, longitude and latitude, your height and your distance, you get your speed, whether you want to use VR goggles, you get your planner I think that is, which I can't actually click on. Yeah, it looks like your flight record, there we go. You also have your settings button, as well your, as your back button here. Then you have your return to home. Then you have your uh, follow follow me distance there. Come on. Then you have your... Um, what is that one? Is that land? No. That's circle me. And then at the bottom one there you have flight plan. So you can see exactly where it is that uh, you can just click on the on the screen and it'll fly around you. I'm going to be testing that as well so let's hope that's good. And at the bottom there you have your map where you can zoom out of, you can zoom into and things like that. As well as you have here, you have your multimedia so you can get access to your photo and your video whether it's on the phone or whether it's on the smart or the SD card. And then you have take photo as well as slide between photo and video. So that looks okay. That was just a very, very quick look at the SEMA Fly app. Okay, so what is it that we get in the pack with all of this? Well, we get our drone. We get our propellers. We get our landing sprigs, our camera. As well as our trusty transmitter. As well as you get four spare propellers. You get four propeller guards. You get one USB charge cable. You get a balance charger. And of course, you get the battery, which is inside the quadcopter as well. And you get the manual not to forget that so there we are folks i hope you've enjoyed thank you ever so much for watching and listening i've been jd you've been fantastic as always if you haven't already please like and subscribe hello and welcome to all the new subscribers i hope you're enjoying the channel so until next time my friends happy flying